Hello my fellow crafters, welcome back to Inspiration for Cards. Today is an exciting day because we've got a new release from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Um, we've already had some fun releases in the last couple of weeks, months, but uh, this one I'm actually very excited about because I love stencils and you know I love the Planner Essentials stencils. Uh, I've used them loads and there's a new stencil pack out. Yay! So let's just switch camera and so we can have a look at these stencils now uh, there are six new stencils this pattern i love this oh i need to choose which one to use because this i love as well and this one look at that i also love and there are four uh neutral stencils this one as well i love it i love the patterns um, and there are two Christmas stencils. Now, this is a nice Christmas pattern, uh, makes beautiful background pages. And this one, look at that, look at that. Uh, I just, I have to be honest, I had a play. I had a play on a piece of paper from Reminiscence, the book, no, not the, the last paper pack, the Christmas Lives Here pack, sorry, I was, and look at that. I used white pigment ink and used white embossing powder. And isn't this a stunner? So I'm just going to cut that out and page done, check, and just put some photos on, etc. Love it, love it. So uh, I've already tried that one. I'm going to be using some fun, different techniques uh, on stencils. So um, yeah, let's just get started. I've got some soft finish cardstock here because I love it. And I'm going to put my uh, stencil right on there. Then I'm going to take some of last year's Christmas collection from uh, Distress Mica stains. I know they're sold out, but I just love them. Uh, and for this technique, they work like a charm. Now I just need to shake these up because as you can see, the mica sticks to the bottom. So I will shake them up and then we'll get started. Now, normally I would use my splatter box for this, but not now. I'm going to... Um, yeah, just spray carefully because uh, I'm going to use a lot of different techniques. So, yeah, I'm just going to open up my bottles and I'm just going to lightly mist this over my stencil. I'm not going to use the red one at the moment. I just made up my mind that I'm going to use, oh, here it is, uh, Decade. That's from the Halloween release. But hey, who says you can't mix and match, right? And mix and matching is what we're going to do. You'll find out. So I'm just going to spray some more on here. Then I'm just going to lift this up and look at that. We're not done with this by all means. I'm just going to put that to the side and... Um, get a piece of the soft finish cardstock. I'm gonna take this, spritz this with water. So it's wet. And then I'm going to put that on here. Take a piece of paper towel and press that on there. Now I'm putting on that paper towel, as you can see, it's in the corner here, <laughs> uh, so that you can, when, when you press it on there, it will absorb any of the excess ink that's coming out of there. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm just letting that sit on there while I clean this up. Now, yes, I can mop this up with um, another piece of card, but I don't, I, I want to focus on the stencils because I'm not done yet with this one. I'm going to, I've got my uh, Spellbinders Universal Plate System right here, and I'm going to put this right on here. So this has been on here already for a while. And I'm going to turn that over carefully, making sure it's not shifting. I'm going to put a piece of paper towel in between because I don't want to ruin it. Now, despite the fact that it is spell binders, you can use your Sizzix machine for this. So I'm going to put my 
uh, squishy plate on there and I'm going to put the adapter plate on there and I'm going to put this through my machine. I'm just going to, I don't like this, so I'm just going to tear it off. I don't want that to get caught in my machine, so I'm not going to risk it. Just going to put this one to the side for a minute while that's drying. I'll get back to that. So I'm going to take off my adapter plate, I'm going to take off my squishy, the rubber mat. Now it's a good thing I did that because otherwise my mat would have been completely ruined. And look at that. You get a sort of a letter pressed. Isn't this stunning? I just, I love playing with stencils and ink and and your stencil is almost clean, so that's another benefit of doing this. But I'm not sure the camera is picking it up. But you've got this, let me see if I can, maybe from the back you see. You see that the structure is really in there. So in this, uh, it's really pressed in like a letterpress. So, love that. Love that. Cool. This one is going to go to the side. Now this one is not finished by all means. But I'm going to dry this now. And while this is drying, I'm going to dab off the excess ink, the darker splotches. Not because I don't like them, but they will not dry. So that's why I'm taking them off. Okay. Now, beautiful, right? Uh, I'm not done. No way. Because what I'm going to do next is... Make sure I've got some paper towel ready. I'm going to spray this with water. Yes. This ink is water reactive. And I want this to create some movement. But because the pattern has dried on there, it will stay visible. Now I'm going to take another piece of soft finish cardstock and I'm going to put that right on top of that and squish. Just press that on. Give that a good rub. Gives me a good opportunity to clean as well. <laughs> and then lift that off. Now, we've got a stunning background here. We let this dry. And I like that. I like this softness it gives. Love it. Right. Let me put this right here to dry. And I'm just going to pick this up and... Gonna let that do its thing. Let that move a bit. And I'm gonna dry that again. Okay. Now that's all nice and dry now. I'm fighting with my mat here. But I love this effect. The fact that you yeah the the, the intensity of the color is where I dried it first. And because it was dried, it was set in there. But it's water reactive, so you wet it again and you get this ink layer. And now this one will dry beautiful as well. And I will have a stunning background for a card or, or maybe even a planner page. Who knows? Um, so that will have to dry a bit further. But I want to get some splatters on there. So I'm going to... Just put some splatters on there and let that sit for a moment. Let that sit there um, and then I will start to dry that. And why am I drying it? Because I want the effect of a darker outside uh, than the inside. And that will this create. So there we go. This is one background done. Now I just have to cut it out do that later. Um, but look, there's another one that we made with the same um, stencil. 
we made a letter press and look at that shine from that mica i love it and then we've got this one to play around with so yeah i love that let's see what we can do with this one my make art station because that will definitely help so what i'm going to do because why not i'm going to there i'm going to stamp um use a color i'm not sure what yet to uh yeah put some wordings on the back there let's see let's just try living on the edge i'm going to use peppermint because this is dry now um so let's see what it does here we go Oh, I love this. Okay, a bit smudgy. I don't care. I don't care. Because there will be pictures on here anyway. But I did that because I shifted it. But I love it. I just love making my own background paper. And this, these stencils are fantastic. Now look at that. I'm not sure you can pick it up. But look at that shine. This screams Christmas, right? So that's another one done. I'm going to put this one to the side as well. Okay, next I have to do some work with my um, Elizabeth Craft Designs tape. Um, and I'm going to put some tape on the front of this. So I'm going to take the smooth side in this case. Take my roll. Put it down. this down and press it on okay so now I'm gonna be really messy but I love the result so I don't care about it um, I'm going to take my gold leaf I'm going to peel off my backing and I'm going to create a mess. Just going to put this on there. Then I'm going to take my brush. I'm just going to tap that on there. And then I'm going to make circular motions and that will distribute anything that I sort of peel off this background or the of the adhesive uh, it will move it to the place where there's nothing so now i'm just using my brush to clean off any excess okay so now this is all nice and shiny and looking like a gold sheet in a way uh, what i'm going to do next is i'm going to take this stencil which is i love this I don't know what these are called, but I just love that crunchy look. I'm going to put that on here. I'm going to take my plates and I'm going to put that right here. Next, I'm going to take my rubber thingy, put the adapter plate on. And I think I'm going to try to use that extra shim. It, sh it doesn't have to. You don't have to, but I just like that it gives just an extra bit of pressure especially with this gold on um, yeah I hope it just does the trick so there we go so take off this shim take off the adapter plate I can already see from the back it's done a great job wow Look at that. Do you see that structure in there? Now we're not done by all means. This is just a downside. If you get gold everywhere, well, I don't care. I love it. So what I've got here is I've got gold. Oh, I've got, uh, not gold, red stays on. I've got black stays on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stays on and keep this flat. And I'm just going to go over... These little hexagons, is that what they're called? No. Just giving this color. Now, why am I using uh, stays on? 
just simply because uh, now this is a, a non-porous uh, structure so um, ink will not dry that quick and stays on dries on plastic pretty quickly so that's why I'm using stays on now look that's already very very nice now what I should have done is actually cut out a page first but I didn't and I don't care <laughs> because it will be fun anyway now I'm just using my black stays on because I don't want it stark red to make it a bit more grungy but I just like that hint of red that's peeking through and there we have it a beautiful background come on come on there we go a beautiful background using a stencil and using stencil not how it's intended which is something that I love okay that was stencil number three so look, let's sum up what we've got we've got this one we've got that one I love this one we've got that one I love this one as well we've got this one cool then we've got this one that I've already done before and I think the green matches nicely so I'm gonna trim that one out as well and then I've got a couple more to go what I'm going to do with this one I'm actually going to trim this one out for this technique because I want to make sure that it works so uh, bear with me while I cut this one out so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some tape and tape this to the back so what I've got here is, is I've never used this stuff so I'm going to try it it's a soft gel gloss um, clear drying acrylic medium uh, but it's a gloss and I like but I don't want a gloss sorry I picked the wrong one <laughs> I want this one the matte so I'm gonna put that on here I'm going to take my rubber spatula and I'm just gonna put this I'm making a mess but I love it put this on here there's still some colors on my thing I think Oh well, I don't care, because this is going to be fun. So I'm just going to put a good dose of this stuff on there. I'm just not going to put it back because it's got color in now, which is a shame, but okay, it's a big jar, so I will remember that for next time. Next, I'm going to take my scraper. This is from Simon Hurley. Very handy. And I'm just going to smooth over that, making sure there's a smooth layer on there. And then I will pick this off there. So I'm just going to peel this off. And I'm just going to put this in the sink because it uh, it really has to be clean. Um, I don't want to throw it away. So this will dry and I will be back in a flash. Okay, this one is dry and I've got some oxide sprays out um, that I'm going to combine with the sprays from uh, the mica sprays. Okay, I'm going to start with old paper. Just spritz some on there. Then I'm going to take tea dye, which is a nice vintage old color. Then I'm going to take frayed burlap. Just a tiny bit. I already love this. <laughs> and then I'm going to take this tree lot, which is the green that we've used before. So, and I'm just going to spritz that with water a bit because it's oxides. I want that to oxidize and it's going to pull around the paste we put on there. And then I'm going to dry this. There we go. 
That's what I like. Now I just want some splatters on there. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to spritz some on there. Like that. And I'm just going to dry this and then I will see the result. But I think this is going to be lovely. I will just take a piece of paper towel and I will just put that over it in a second because that ink is already, uh, color is already on there. So I'm just going to put that on there and dab on it just to get out that excess moisture. And of course, I need some splatters on there. I just love this. Look at that. Fantastic. The paste. Yeah, I just love it. The, the, the paper has a different color than on the paste. Um, I think I can even sort of use that as a resist. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Look at that. I can just wipe that off. I love that even better. Look at that. Love it. Love it. Okay. What I'm going to do next, because that's what I do with all my pages, so I'll do that with this one already, is take my frayed burlap, if I can find my... There we go. Take my frayed burlap in the ink and just edge this page. Now, this is not completely dry yet. So I've got to be careful when I'm etching it that I don't rip the paper because it's, it feels really wet. There's a lot of moisture on there, but this goes to show that this, this is soft finish cardstock, guys. It's not watercolor paper. It's not mixed media paper. It's just the soft finish cardstock. And you can do all this to soft finish cardstock. That was really an eye opener for me. Now I will put this to the side and let that dry for a bit. But don't you love this? another one done now this one i will show you another time um, but i will do something with this one um, so i need to make a background first before i do that and i will cut a page out and then i will use the same um, green that i've used in the other ones because then it's sort of matchy matchy and i like the combination with the paper so So going to put on some old paper a tiny bit of tea dye and some more of the mica stain so i like that mix of the micas with the oxides the matte with the shine i'm just going to spritz this a bit with water to get some movement and just let that move around okay now i'm going to take another piece of card again i'm going to put that over and press that on there Just give that some time to adhere the ink to sink into the paper and then peel it off. And then I've got two beautiful backgrounds. This one I need to, oh, I love these stripes. This one I love as well. Put that here. This is the, a beautiful base page for what I'm going to use it for. So I'm just going to dab that up a bit. Okay, I'm gonna dry this again. Do you see that hint of that sheen in there? Love that. And because there's all these different colors on there, it, it's, it's got a sort of a layeredness to it. 
there's going to be a lot more shine to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got the Simon Hurley Creates Lunar Paste right here. I'm going to use that. I've never used it before, so I'm curious to see what it will do. So I'm going to put this on here. Now I want this to be, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on there from the middle and move this stuff on there. Just like a normal paste. It's a bit thinner. Never used it before, but I like how it goes on. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this scraper tool just to go over that to really smooth it out. And then for the big reveal, da -da 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 -da. look at that. Okay, I'm going to put this in my in the bin, I wanted to say. No, I'm not going to throw this in the bin because then I'm losing my stencil. I'm going to throw this in the sink and then I'll be right back. Now, while the Simon Hurley paste is drying, I've cut out all these pages and I don't like this one. I love this one, don't get me wrong, but I think it's too clean compared to the other ones I made. So I'm just going to give this a spritz with water to reactivate that ink and just let that run over that page and dry this and then you will see it gets more of a old vintagey style look okay now we are ready for the final results um so there we go i'm thinking to use them in my uh, uh december day by day because some of these will make fantastic backgrounds for the new dyes um like with the holly etc so yeah that will be in my december day by day so that's why i've done them like this and i think because i used the same color green etc it really matches well um so this is a salmon holy one now it's dry look at that shine love it so yeah and uh, this page now i love it uh it was too stark white for me so uh, that's fun now and look at these fantastic now this is yes it's bright and shiny but it's christmas so it's it can be it can be done this one i'm in love with as well and of course this one shouts christmas to you as well so yeah i'm really thrilled with how these turned out um i hope you like them too so i really hope you like them too there will be more to come in the future with these stencils of course because i love playing with stencils but now for the introduction i've used five different stencils and made a lot of different pages so i hope you enjoyed it hope you picked something up inspire inspiration or even learned something uh, anyways if you like it give this video a thumbs up consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and i would love to see you for the next one thank you for this one bye